Hello and welcome to today's premium account market update for July 2017. Any individual reading or listening should discuss with their financial planner or advisor the merits of any recommendation offer presented in this material for their own specific circumstances and realise that not all investments are appropriate for every individual. Presented today, myself, Leon Hine, Managing Director of Investor Signals, have over 18 years of experience in the financial services industry and a licensed securities and derivatives advisor. The topics for today, we look at the macro update driving equities. We roll through the ASX top 50 with a focus on FE17 and FE18 earnings. We look at the technical trends as well as our portfolio allocation and conclude with a short-term market outlook. If you'd like to take advantage of a free 30-day trial we're offering to get access to the new charts, watch lists and the buy and sell algorithm signals that we've built, along with our research and blog content, please visit blog.investorsignals.com slash register or email me leon at investorsignals.com. The premium account service is a model portfolio based on ASX50 stocks. We utilize call options to enhance portfolio returns. We focus on effective ownership around ex-dividend dates. We're generating above average cash flow while still seeking capital growth. It's all in a strict investment mandate and importantly the assets remain in your name. If you'd like to know more about our premium account service please contact me on the phone number on screen or again Leon at investorsignals.com. Moving straight into a graph of the US equity uh, market uh, and looking at the Dow Jones index, the US equities continue to push higher. We're just starting to see the early stage of June quarter earnings results come through. Uh, large US banks reported on Friday and they continue to do so this week. Uh, we think sort of at best the US equity market delivers maybe about 6% underlying earnings growth, very little on top line revenue and there's still uh, significant levels of enge financial engineering occurring across financial markets, both supported by central banks and companies buying back shares, which makes it really quite difficult to determine sort of where fair uh, valuation for equities are uh, in an environment uh, where that sort of level of financial engineering starts to reduce. Uh, let's just quickly go through the main indices here in the US and just see what type of patterns we have. Uh, the NASDAQ, so we've seen a sell-off in the NASDAQ, which has really been an unwind of uh, some very high PE valuations within the technology sector. We're about a week out from starting to see the big tech names begin to report in the US. Uh, I suspect that at best the NASDAQ's in a consolidation phase given the very high PE valuations. If we have a look at the XJO, what's happening here, on the blog we've been commenting on that the market's actually in a lower high structure, so a little bit different to the US there, and we're cautious unless the XJO can trade back up through 50 58.50, we're thinking that it probably more than likely comes down and tests lower levels. So let's have a look at how that impacts on the top 50 stocks. Uh, AGL, uh, we see this name is expensive and whilst we recognise that there's been an algorithm buy signal here and there could be supported around 24.50, it's not a stock that we're allocating to at the moment. Aristocrat Leisure, the same thing, uh, you know, the stocks had great momentum and the prior buy signals have been very accurate but we're cautious at the moment given valuations at 25 times earnings on a 1.5% dividend yield. We're actually really not going to look at aristocrat unless we see it back at around this sort of $17 to $18 range as an ultimate sort of buy point. And that's just reflective of these concerns that we see in the market of these high PE valuations and low yields and the uh, difficulty that some of these companies are going to have growing earnings at 20 to 40 percent per annum uh, on an ongoing basis which you know is almost what the market's pricing in um, and we'd prefer to sort of look at those on a one or two year period when they disappoint and don't deliver that type of earnings growth rather than chase them at these valuations. Amcor we don't mind this so we continue to hold this in portfolios uh, if we look at it across the last couple of years in the most part it's traded sideways if we go back to early 2015 it was worth around $14.50 today it's been trading at around $15.50 $16 we think that the underlying earnings growth can be maintained at about 6 to 8 percent per annum puts the stock on a 3.75 percent dividend yield 
add a covered call to it, we're generating around 10 to 12% cash flow and we're still allowing for some capital gain through selling that call slightly above where the market's trading. AMP not doing there at present. ANZ, all the Australian banks, we think a good outcome is they bump along sideways, but there's still risks to the downside, which makes us cautious. Uh, APA group, again, the algorithm buy signal here on the higher, high, higher, low. Technically, it looks great. Uh, we have the stock on about a 4.9% dividend yield, but we think there's better alternatives within the infrastructure space to focus on. ASX, we like this. It's extremely expensive from a historical standard. It's now trading 24 times earnings on a 3.8% dividend yield, and there's not much in the way of underlying profit growth. So in a low interest rate environment, it can be justified and maybe it trades sideways, but uh, again, a little bit cautious there just from a value standpoint. Horizon, we think this company is subject to uh, uh, earning, uh, dividend downgrades and it may be that fair valuation is actually back at around $4.50, so we're cautious there on that. BHP has been our preferred uh, resource exposure and it's been a simple story um, on the basis that, the, that there's pressure on the board of directors to review uh, potentially spinning off the energy assets uh, which will help to unlock value for shareholders. We think that little bit of optimism that's in the stock or building in the stock price around that probably is pretty close to uh, running its course and at around $25, $26, I think BHP is full value and it's time to take profit or sell covered calls over it. Uh, Brambles, we like this just from a valuation argument. We don't think there's too much upside in the share price given sort of our current concerns around uh, broader share market growth levels, but at around $9.50, the stock should be okay support around 18 times earnings, 3.5% dividend yield. The company should deliver 3 to 5% earnings growth, own it, sell tight covered calls, and you're delivering 10 to 12% cash flow. CBA, we're still a little bit cautious of the negative technical structure there. And we're uh, really, you know, quite underweight the banks at the moment. Computer share, I think this stock's grossly overvalued, and fair value for computer share is probably back down at around twelve to thirteen dollars. Uh, so we're cautious there on computer share at twenty times earnings and a two point four percent dividend yield. Uh, CSL, I think this is one to keep on your radar. Uh, companies growing earnings at around twenty percent, as well as doing a substantial, I think, one billion dollar share buyback. So keep an eye on this one. We don't have an algorithm buy signal yet on it, but certainly as it comes through this sort of a higher low structure that will develop here, I think it will provide a good buying opportunity. Keltex, we like this, 14 times earnings on a 3.75% dividend yield. I think there's the possibility that we see further commentary out of the company about maybe revaluing the assets uh, and separating out the uh, REIT or the real estate investment trust component of the business uh, from the retail uh, fuel and refinery side, which might help to uh, give uh, investors a clearer indication of what the valuation for uh, shareholders would be if Keltex was to ultimately sort of spin off the property side into its own uh, uh, real estate investment trust. Um, from the research I've been reading, probably in that scenario, arguably Keltex is sort of a 36 to 37 dollar stock. We're just looking at that story as something that provides some price support and we're owning at these levels and selling a fairly tight covered call and driving that sort of 10 to 12 percent cash flow. Dexas, not doing it there at the moment. Fortescue, not doing it there at the moment, although we recognise that obviously iron ore prices are having a bit of a bounce from their oversold level uh, and that's maybe one of the factors that's helping to drive the Aussie dollar higher at the moment as well. Goodman Group, this is a really well uh, ran a property trust, but it is expensive, 18 times earnings on a 3.2% dividend yield. But we've got an al algorithm buy signal here. I think in an environment wh which we're in at the moment where the market's starting to recognise that US interest rates are probably not going to rise as quickly as they thought only a week or two back, then these property stocks are likely to go through a little bit of a technical bounce from here, but they are expensive. But uh, you can certainly look at this from a trading uh, 
stay in point with the stop loss below that recent sort of pivot there where we had the algorithm buy signal. GPT, we like this name. We've been buying it on this dip. We see a rally back to $5 as an opportunity to sell covered calls, drive the extra cash flow into October, November, and then collect the dividend in December as well. Insurance Australia, we like this, but the stock's expensive, 20 times earnings on a 3.7 a yield. We've owned it at lower levels. We continue to hold it and sell, sell tight covered calls to complement the return there. Intertech pivot, we actually don't mind this. We, if we just turn off these yellow markers, which link through to the posts that we made on the stock and we focus on the algorithm signals here, it's flagging that the stock's broken out in a higher high. It's pulled back. Now, if we saw the stock come back below 325, we'd be a little bit concerned. Uh, but at the moment, if we just sort of zoom out and have a closer look at what's going on here, uh, the stock has pulled back and filled this uh, price gap here. I think over the next day or two, we may find that they actually find support and trades a little bit higher. But I think the outlook for IPL on a sort of one or two year basis should be quite supportive. Not doing here in James Hardy. I think this looks expensive at 26 times earnings and a 2.6% dividend yield. Struggle to see valuation there. Lend lease, I think this is expensive and at risk of a correction to the downside. Mervac, not doing anything there at the moment. Medibank Private, I think this is a buying opportunity. It's hard to know sort of ultimately where the support is, but at around sort of this, these levels, somewhere between, say, let's just call it around $2.70. The stock's on 17 times earnings on a 4.2% dividend yield. Again, it's one of these names that doesn't have any too much to offer in the way of revenue or profit growth, but owning it and selling a very tight covered call, you're getting 10 to 12% cash flow, and I don't see it having the same downside risk as other areas of the market. Macquarie, we're cautious on, and we think there's every chance that Macquarie breaks through this support and actually trades lower in the weeks and months ahead. Uh, as a, with the case of NAB, um, a good outcome, banks move sideways, but still pressure to the downside. Newcrest, gold's been under pressure over the last uh, little while, and that's really been driven off the back of these higher interest rates in the US um, and the expectation that, in, that, that, that the US would continue to raise rates not only into the back half of 2017, but also through 2018. We think those uh, forecasts are probably wrong and the market starts to reconsider uh, gold again, uh, especially in light of the, the US equity market maybe breaking sort of this upward support line that it's been maintaining. We'd expect Newcrest to do well. So we've added Newcrest back in the client portfolios. Origin, we like this. We think that sort of continues to be positive outcomes around uh, Origin's uh, debt reduction program and increased earnings from LNG. So whilst this higher, high, higher, low structure stays in place, we're happy to continue to own Origin. Uh, Orica not doing there at the moment. Uh, Qantas, if anything, we see sort of this as an ongoing uh, shorting opportunity. We think the stock's just got too expensive. QBE, uh, in light of these interest rate expectations ratcheting back, I'm not sure that there's a lot of uh, price support for QBE, albeit in August the company starts their share buyback. I think from recollection the number is maybe somewhere up around $700 million worth of shares that, that they're buying back, which will certainly help to add support to the share price at 14 times earnings and about a 5% dividend yield. Uh, I think QBE trades sideways to you know, moderately higher. Uh, Ramsey Healthcare, we like this, but the stock's expensive, 28 times earnings on a 1.8% dividend yield. So we've been focusing on really trading this. We're buying it sort of on these pullbacks, taking profit, and then looking to uh, continue to sort of pick it up on, it, on any pullback or retracement in price. I think Rio BHP are near the tops of their rally at the moment, and that's just off the basis that I think iron ore uh, ha has probably had a technical bounce from its oversold level, but the fundamentals probably still put pressure on iron ore prices to the downside. Uh, South 32. I'm not doing there at present. Center Group. So we're interesting that we're seeing sort of in the US money come into these REITs, uh, and that's really off the back of sort of these interest rate uh, uh, rises uh, being ratcheted back, the expectation of interest rate rises being ratcheted back, uh, and that's feeding 
through to money flowing back into yield sensitive names. So real estate investment trusts, in infrastructure stocks, consumer staples. So when we're seeing that occur in the US market, Obviously, that flows through to the Australian market. These property names have been a little bit uh, out of favour uh, and they're now having a bounce from sort of their oversold levels. I don't see Centre Group doing too much more than maybe trading back up to 410, 420, which puts it on about a 5% dividend yield. We own this in portfolios and we've sold fairly tight covered calls. I think over the next sort of 12 months, we see this mostly move sideways. Uh, Stocklands, I think this has a technical bounce, could rally back up to around 450. Don't see it doing any more than that. And then it rolls over and probably trades lower. Sonic Healthcare, this is one of the names that we continue to hold in portfolios. Again, if we go back over the last two years, the stock's really trading at similar levels that it was in 2015. Um, and therefore, this is a good uh, candidate as a buy right to add income to portfolios. So we've been, we buy it at lower levels uh, on any of these pullbacks and uh, uh, near the top end of the rally, we sell covered calls over it to enhance the return. Uh, and I think that sort of uh, remains uh, a cornerstone investment in portfolios. Santos not doing in there at present. Uh, Suncorp, we think that's expensive and we're avoiding that. Sydney Airports, we don't mind this on the pullback. The algorithm engines triggered a buy signal here at around sort of $6.70. Um, our strategy with these is to go out into September, October, sell covered calls slightly above where we've paid for it, collect the added income, and then uh, wait to see whether we get exercised on that, or if not, uh, obviously uh, hang around and collect the December dividend and then resell the calls again. So we're driving good cash flow from Sydney and Transurban running that same approach. In the case of Transurban, we think sort of around this 11.25 is about fair value, owning it here and selling sort of slightly out of the money calls as well as the strategy there. Telstra, I've highlighted there the trading range on screen. Uh, we're looking for some positive commentary out of the company in the August earnings result regarding maybe a share buyback that helps to underpin the stock price. Treasury Wine's not doing anything there. If we have a look at this just from a PE perspective, the algorithm engine's done a terrific job in the past of picking up these higher lows and they've turned out to be great buying opportunities. Now we're faced with a decision here at $12.20. Uh, is this again an opportunity to get into Treasury Wines? At 31 times earnings and a 2% dividend yield, it just looks a little bit rich for us, and it sits in that basket where we're happy to trade these uh, and, and apply stop losses. But as far as uh, it being considered a core holding of portfolios, it doesn't really fit with our sort of defensive asset mix at the moment. Uh, Westpac Bank, same story as the other. West Farmers, I think this just looks uh, like a sideways consolidation play here. West Farmers at 16 times earnings and a five and a quarter percent dividend yield. We're not expecting much in the way of earnings growth from the upcoming result. So fair value should be maybe around that 41 to 42 dollars. So owning it and selling tight covered calls. Uh, is okay there. Westfield, so these real estate investment trusts have been oversold again off the back of sort of those US interest rates moving higher as that starts to sort of come out of the market from a pricing perspective. There's the opportunity for these to rebound a little, but at 17 times earnings and a 4.5% dividend yield, we don't see it doing too much more to the upside above sort of $8.25 and trying to get covered calls away in the high $8 just to add additional income makes sense there with Westfield. Woolworths, uh, higher highs, higher lows. The algorithm signal created a buy alert here at around 24.90. The stock's pushing higher. When you do sort of the math here on Woolworths, the market's looking for dividends to increase from 2017 of around 80 cents into 2018 financial year to around 90 cents. I think that could be a bit conservative. I think maybe there's an argument that Woolworths will have the capacity to pay out roughly 50 cents a half or a dollar for the full year in dividends. That could support a price in Woolworths up at around $27.50, $28 and still have the stock on about a 4% dividend yield. 3.8 to 4% dividend yield. So that's probably the maximum upside. So owning it here, going out uh, six months, selling a covered call into December, 
collecting the upcoming September dividend. We're allowing for some capital growth as well as getting 10 to 12 percent cash flow as a combination of that dividend and, and call option income. Woodside Petroleum, we're mindful that the algorithm engines flagged a buying opportunity on this pullback, uh, but we're actually not looking for too much right at the you know in the weeks ahead. Uh, out of energy prices to the upside. So, uh, and there we are back to the index. So I'll just conclude with a quick look at the XJO. Uh, and so this is really, I guess, what we're watching closely is uh, the lower high structure that's playing out in the Australian market. Uh, we are in the early stages of US earnings for the June quarter. Uh, and if the earnings turn out to be better than uh, we're expecting and the XJO can push back up through this level, you know, that's mostly going to be driven by resources and banks moving higher, um, which are two areas of the market that we're a little bit cautious on at the moment. So our preference is still to try to stay uh, overweight in sort of the healthcare names, the infrastructure names, consumer staples. Um, so when we go through today's recording, the type of stocks we highlight, Amcor, you know, in the resource space, it was really limited to BHP, uh, healthcare, we like CSL, we like um, Keltex in the property space, GPT, uh, Insurance Australia, um, Medibank Private, a little bit of Newcrest on the gold side, Origin Energy. Uh, Ramsey and so on. So it's a fairly defensive mix in the portfolio and we're not balanced in the traditional exposure to uh, banks and resources that a, a lot of uh, traditional portfolio allocations are based around. Thank you for listening into the recording and if you'd like to uh, discuss with me uh, more about the Investor Signal Service, please contact me using the details on screen.